but books from you know the last five years, ten years, that makes uh, I think quite a difference. And in, in that sense, it's very simple for a, for a city over there. And as I said about recycling, we can uh, learn from 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 the Ethiopians, where they have, for example, the packaging strings. They not only recycle them, reuse them, but for them it's so valuable, in fact, relatively valuable, that they even uh, uh, c collect them uh, in different colors, so that you can still have the yellow ones, the, ri the red ones, or the white ones. And they use every little piece of metal without melting it again, but simply reusing it. We were impressed by that, and we, were, uh, we love it, the way they approach a project. For us, the project was uh, restructuring the existing compound. The, the landscaping was in a terrible state, so we, we kind of we wanted to have the landscaping back, the quality of the landscape back, and not so much of the architecture. Uh, um, it, we thought that uh, expressing uh, the diplomatic, you know, uh, way of of, of 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 connecting to Addis Ababa to the Ethiopians and at the same time to other uh, diplomacies, uh, you can better do through a beautiful park than through buildings. Uh, so we doubled the northern wall and we put in the staff houses in between two walls, so you had private gardens. Uh, and more important, what we extremely liked in Ethiopia, the north of Ethiopia, was buildings that were excavated out of uh, uh, soft rock. So in fact, these buildings constructed about 700 years ago it, it was not about you know adding material by simply by taking out material. Um, an amazing approach, uh, beautiful with underground structures and and anti and and, and ramp, ramps and stairs. Yes, uh, so that's how we tried to approach. We could not literally excavate a building, but we could at least uh, sort of uh, relate to these uh, Lalibela rock churches. As we did. And what we did is we made a building that the, the roof uh, is exactly in line with the highest level of the compound. So the roof is more, the building is more uh, um, made as a, as, a, as, a, as a horizontal pond, a linear line of water. There is a lot of water in Addis Abeba. It's not a dry country, it's very wet. In the rainy season, this roof is completely filled with water. So we have this linear line of water, which is a very Dutch approach, a very Dutch system a technical linear water line, and all people work and live uh, below water level here. And that was for us the sort of Dutch link, and for the rest we liked the Ethiopian approach much more. Um, and when you drive back, you come through the carport, for example, here, so you're at the lower level entering. And uh, we wanted to relate to Ethiopia in the most sober way of using architecture. By The best they can do is cast concrete in big concrete forms. So we said, please, let's walk, work with casting concrete. Very simple. And the only thing we do is we add ferro-oxides to, to color the concrete, no more. Uh, and therefore, it was able to build it completely local. Uh, and when you drive back, you will see the front porch, uh, which is, in fact, the end of the building. Uh, in the interior being a sort of secluded and luxurious. So some stucco, some marble, and of course the Dutch furniture then finish it off, it's, it's okay. I think that the furniture then is more important for the feeling of luxury than the architecture itself. Uh, the private residence with, well, say no more with a garden like this. You could live in a shed, in fact. Uh, the middle corridor, which has this landscaping feeling because it follows the height lines of the, of, the, uh, of the site. So, as you see here, we have a sort of sloping middle corridor, very simple, almost Lalibela-like uh, quality of light, very dark and sometimes very light, as you see here. Um, and by sloping up, in the beginning you have two stories and at the end you have only one story and then uh, that's the way uh, you use the architecture in a very sort of modest, uh, modest way. And therefore, after two years of, uh, you know, that the vegetation could uh, regain its uh, beauty, and we took a lot of uh, acacia trees out, 
they are not endemic, and uh, we restored the uh, the park-like uh, quality. That was our main uh, concern. Yeah, as I said, what we try to do is uh, next to technique and all these other uh, issues in architecture. Um, as an architect, you can easily get lost in all the possible things you can do in terms of sustainability. Here. But we, we try to focus on a few things, uh, and one of that, most important, is the awareness. Um, we had a sort of a funny duo. We, tr we tried to work with a sort of link between a building in Holland and a building in Switzerland. Um, one we called uh, uh, Zum Loch, a little hole just next to the thermal bath of uh, Peter Zumthor. And the other one is Tower Power, which is about an education tower for children, for people in general, uh, to understand what a forest is about. Because normally, you, it, at least in Holland, it's, it's quite dramatic how little uh, young people know about nature. It is teach at school, but being really connected to nature is a, is a sort of a problem, especially in urbanized, high-density Holland. So uh, these projects are, I think, quite important for them to, uh, to understand. So we flew a sort of small circle of green that we took out of the hill in Switzerland to Holland and then pushed it. At the same time, we built a tower in a forest and we pushed up the forest, in fact. So we, we doubled nature or we tried to emphasize the natural elements of it. They asked us to make a, a, a forest route, a path going up into the tops of the trees. In this uh, park, you have the highest trees of Holland, 42 meters high, the Segoia trees from the United States. And we thought it would be nice if the children have the feeling of climbing a tree instead of having this linear path. At the same time, the linear path was much more expensive than the sort of uh, concentrated tower that uh, represents a tree. So we came up with this approach of having a, a tree trunk, a stem, and then have branches where they can uh, look at different aspects of the forest at different levels. Uh, and that's how we try to approach it. Uh, and uh, since we had to take out a little be piece of, of land, we, we, we said, we, let's double that piece of nature by uh, putting on 40 meters high, not this sort of steel platform, but again a forest. So you end up in the forest. And at the same time, you can overcome this sort of small frustration from Holland that in the United States, these Segoyas, they grew like 110 meters high. In Holland, they can't. So here we can double the length of the Segoya by again going up. So we invented this path with uh, as much as possible differences in how to climb. Uh, we didn't succeed in building it all, but there are still uh, possibilities of empty spaces in the tree, in this steel tree, in this tower to uh, to uh, build in extra features uh, later on. We have a big tent that you can take out, a sort of tipi Indian tent, so that you can have a party all, all the way down. As you see, uh, I don't know if this one works. No, it doesn't. Uh, and by going up uh, different features, you even end up with uh, a climbing net that at 30 meters height, you have to climb over a net and then there's 30 meters under you. Uh, so that the children can even feel the fear of being high up in a tree. Um, it took about three years to, uh, to uh, prepare this and uh, in the end we had to change a lot in the design of the tree 